Good evening, friends and neighbors. Today's a date that does not matter, and you're watching and or listening to No Request, live from the Tavern, the only radio show to broadcast neither live nor on the radio. As always, I'm your host, Tavern Bars, and let's start today's show off with a little game. I'm going to play three separate songs from three very different artists, and when you hear this noise, you're going to type up a comment telling me what you believe these songs have in common. Now, this is important. Please only comment when you hear the noise. I don't own most of the videos in this playlist, and we really don't need to confuse the Hanson fans out there. But yeah, anyways, the game starts in 3, 2, 1. Welcome back to the show! The songs you just heard were Ya Mama by The Far Side, Extreme Ways by Moby, and Mbop by Hanson. Have you figured out what these songs have in common? Well, feel free to put it in the comments now. You good? Alright, if you said something along the lines of these songs use the same drums, then congrats! These three songs all sample Melvin Bliss's 1973 B-side track, Synthetic Substitution, written by Herb Rooney and with drums by Bernard Purdy. According to WhoSampled.com, Synthetic Substitution has been sampled more than 800 times, and that's now counting the numerous DJ mixes, independent productions, and recursive samples whose origins are all rooted in that 6 second drum loop. We'll get into those songs a bit later, but first, let's hear the original in all its glory. Stay tuned, I'll be right back after the break. Here's Melvin Bliss with Synthetic Substitution. It's a little strange, right? Hearing the entire thing? Like, those drums still hit to this day, but there's so much more going on. That piano, that soulful voice, those lyrics. For a song with such a warm voice, those lyrics are just downright cold. It's paranoia. It's cyberpunk before cyberpunk. These lyrics are about the loss of nature to technology. Light bulbs replacing sunlight, engines replacing horses, his lover might even be a machine. These lyrics play off the rest of the song like a drum, but there are some artists who are more likely to just play the song itself like a drum. In 1986, the drum loop and initial piano chord were resampled through the use of a drum machine by the hip-hop group Ultramagnetic MCs. The resulting song, titled Ego Trippin', would inspire hundreds of imitators, popularizing the sample not just in the world of hip-hop, but in pop music in general. We'll start our next song with Ego Trippin' and follow that with a few other songs that followed suit. <laughs> So, there's an irony here, right? It's one of the most popular songs in the history of sampling, and to be sure, those drum hits sure do hit. But isn't this kinda what the song's warning about? I mean, we're talking about a song that's been chopped into tiny pieces, fed into a machine, and resurrected as a facsimile of itself. Should I feel bad? I kinda feel bad here. In 2008, Rivers Cuomo of Weezer fame refused to clear a sample of Weezer's Say It Ain't So for a little rap song from a guy named Asher Roth. As a result, Asher Roth's song, I Love College, 
was released with a guitar line similar to but legally distinct from the Weezer song. So for our next bit of music, let's listen to both versions of I Love College as well as Weezer's Say It Ain't So. So, uh, it's pretty obvious why Rivers Cuomo didn't clear the symbol, right? The Weezer song is about daddy issues and alcoholism, and the Asher Roth song is kinda about the joys of alcoholism. I mean, the bridge is just a bunch of frat boys chanting, and I quote, chug, 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 chug. I mean, I don't want to suggest that I know exactly what went through Rivers Cuomo's head as he listened to the Asher Roth demo, but wouldn't it be that surprising if the song maybe opened up a few old wounds? Oh, good God, hand me a drink. Ah. I definitely feel bad now. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and blame the machines for this. I mean, what has modern technology ever done for me? All this YouTube shit is bad for the brain. It's a good thing this is a live radio show, right? Anyways, let's skip the machine music and listen to some good old fashioned piano music. Something played by hand by a real human being. Friends and neighbors, here's Avril 14th by Aphex Twin. Put Kanye West in the playlist, oh my god, mute and I swear. And it's specifically the blame game. You know he stole that sample, right? Like, Richard James was playing pretty nice for Kanye's team, even offering to re-record his song at the right key and BPM for the Kanye song before being told, it's not yours, it's ours, and we're not even asking anymore. No, I don't care that I used to really like Kanye or that The Blame Game is actually a really good song. The dude's a religious nut who keeps spewing bullshit out of his ass mouth and what do you mean this thing is still recording? Welcome back, friends and neighbors. Please ignore any of what you just heard. While I fix things over on my end, please enjoy the next song for tonight. Lift Yourself by Kanye West. Wait, fuck! Picture, if you will, a universe where Kanye West won the 2020 election after a successful decade-long campaign. In this universe, Kanye West is an environmentalist who uses his music to fight climate change and prevent the end of the world. In this universe, Elon Musk has the intelligence and willpower to create interdimensional technology, and Taylor Swift is forced into early retirement. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, the song you just heard isn't actually by Kanye West. To be sure, those are his lyrics, but the version of Kanye West on this track differs from the real Kanye West in several notable ways. He's president, he's a leftist, he's still tight with Drake and Jay-Z and still married to Kim Kardashian. And as nice as all of that sounds, he's also, unfortunately, a complete work of fiction. The previous song is titled Lift Yourself by Toasty Digital, and it's a work of art heavily influenced by but artistically distinct from the Kanye original. It's part of a larger project titled Kanye 2049 and is something of a Kanye West AU fanfic. Each song on the album takes the name of a popular Kanye West song, and indeed the original Kanye song is sometimes sampled. 
but it's always mixed with other samples, mostly other Kanye songs and also some songs that Kanye West has previously sampled himself. And hey, don't those drums sound awfully familiar? It's a celebration not just of Kanye West, but of sampling itself, and it's all being done behind the real Kanye's back. It's the type of art that can only be made through the deliberate destruction of the original artist's work. Celebration, it may be, I can't imagine Kanye particularly cares for this project. Several videos on Toasty's channel have been blocked by copyright strikes. The album sequel, Diet Yeezus, is not unlistenable on the YouTube platform, and that kinda sucks. See, it's funny, it's okay for Kanye to steal from Aphex Twin, but it's a crime when Toasty does the same thing to Kanye. Now let's get back to synthetic substitution, perhaps the most misunderstood sample in hip-hop history. How does the original artist feel about the reappropriation of his work at the hand of others? Well, to be frank, the mood I've been getting from watching different interviews is something like backhanded acceptance. In an interview with Earl Holder, Bernard Purdy reflects on the discovery that many samples of synthetic substitution are unlicensed. So, yes, I was bitter for a while. I have to find this out. But now, it doesn't bother me anymore. Because on top of everything else, you know, people like you who want to know the truth, who want to know the real history of how this music was made and how it's always going to be around. In a separate interview, also hosted by Earl Holder, Melvin Bliss himself seems to view the phenomenon somewhat more positively. I'm so very pleased that uh, Synthetic Substitution has that beat, and that's what uh, kept that alive. However, Bliss has also made it clear that he doesn't see a ton of money from royalty checks. Sadly to say, I have not. Uh, however, my attorney, attorneys are looking into that, and uh, we're going to try to find out uh, what can be done about it. Something I can't help but notice is that nobody in the conversation seems to connect the themes of synthetic substitution to the concept of sampling itself. In fact, both Bliss and Purdy seem fine with the idea of other people using the drums so long as the right people are getting paid, and I'm over here thinking, am I missing something? Synthetic substitution is about something. There's themes to the song about technology and nature and paranoia and nobody, not even the artists, seem to want to talk about it. It makes me wonder, maybe I'm the one overanalyzing the song. In yet another interview with Earl Holder, who seems to be the real hero when it comes to documenting all of this, Melvin Bliss recalls the writing process behind the song. We had no idea what that song was about. We just needed a B-side. In the words of Taylor Swift, it's me. Hi. I'm the problem, it's me. Synthetic Substitution is an amazing song with soulful vocals and dystopian lyrics, but I have maybe overblown the importance of those lyrics in the context of this discussion. In a way, I'm really no better than any of the other musicians who've sampled the song. In the production of the artwork that you're watching and or listening to as of right now, I'm willfully misinterpreting the original text for my own benefit. But maybe that's okay. The lyrics of Synthetic Substitution make it perhaps the most ironic of all the commonly used hip-hop breaks, but that does not remove the artistry of those seeking to reinterpret the piece. Maybe an artist reinterprets the song in a way that augments its original message, or maybe the new song has nothing to do with machines and the nature of paranoia. By that point, Melvin Bliss, Herb Rooney, and Bernard Purdy don't really matter, at least not in the creative sense. Melvin Bliss did not sing Mbop. Herb Bruni didn't write Bring the Ruckus. Hell, one can argue that Purdy isn't the drummer on Ego Trippin'. The pattern's been changed, the context is different, the art is new. I have two more songs I want to play before I close out with a secret surprise third song. The first song is Joski Love's 1986 novelty hip hop track, Pee Wee's Dance, named for who else but Pee Wee Herman himself. The track very specifically samples a snare hit from Synthetic Substitution, but it's been clipped beyond recognition. The second song I want to play is Anti-American Graffiti, a song made on the deathbed of legendary producer J Dilla. This song samples some vocals from Pee Wee's dance entirely separate from the Synthetic Substitution break.
One is a novelty song about a children's show, the other can and will break your heart. And yet, the Dilla track would not exist in its current form without Joski Love, and the Joski Love track would not exist in its current form without Melvin Bliss. Art inspires art. See you after the break. To those of you still listening, welcome back to the show. Today, we explore the art of sampling through the work of Melvin Bliss, Herb Rooney, and Bernard Purdy. I've linked the document containing all my sources in the doobly-doo below, along with some relevant social media links. Now, this is kind of an experimental thing. I mean, what is this? A video essay? An animated pilot? VTubing? Podcast? Radio? Thing? I'd really like to hear some of your feedback, so please feel free to leave a comment below. Either way, this is an obligatory call for you to like, comment, and subscribe. Anyways, let's finish off the show with one last song that follows many of the same themes of the Melvin Bliss track, but whose contributions to hip-hop come in a very different form. Trevor Horn is a pop music producer who's included hip-hop style sampling in a number of productions, including songs like Close to the Edit by Art of Noise, Owner of a Lonely Heart by Yes, and Buffalo Gals by Malcolm McLaurin. Incidentally, the song I want to share from him doesn't feature sampling at all, though it has been sampled a number of times. Friends and neighbors, here's a video killed the radio star by the Buggles. <laughs> <laughs> 